Hello and welcome back to my channel and it's so good to be back to talk about books and we're back into um, our first week of homeschool and cheers to the new year. I'm drinking um, a ginger turmeric, I think it's peach from Bigelow and it's delicious. I uh, needed something warm so uh, we have Totoro joining us today because I love him. <laughs> Is there any other Hayako, Hayako, Hayako Mizuki friends out there? I'd love to know. So uh, we are in almost done with the first week of January, and I had joined a couple January challenges, which have been so fun. I vowed to myself to not do too much because um, it's easy with BookTube and vlogs and challenges to get too much and take the uh, fun out of reading. And I know um, Becca over at Hicks Picks Books was talking about that recently and it was really interesting because she's been on booktube for a while and she was just thinking about, um, you know, just how it's, how it's changing her reading life. And so that was interesting for me to think about. Um, for me, I so far, and I've only, I've been watching BookTube for a couple years, but also I've only been on BookTube for a very short amount of time. And for me, it has been helping me challenge myself to not just pick up the, you know, the newest thing or that's on my library stack or just to fly through lots of like easy, easy reads, but to intersperse some challenging reads to feed my heart and my soul. And so that's been good. So this week, I was so delighted to participate in Oshina's Read in the New Year Challenge. And um, I wanted to talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. But first, I wanted to share a couple of um, actually Christmas devotionals that I just finished because they went through, um, you know, the 12 days of Christmas and Epiphany. And if you have like a little list, I like to have a little list going of things that I might want to read in the following Christmas. And I know there's been so many great Christmas reads in people's wrap ups for 2021. So I was like, okay, I'm going to make a list, but I just wanted to share these two uh, with you in case you want to add those to your list for consideration for in the winter. And both of these start at the end of November, early December. And the first one is watch for the light. Um, readings for Advent and Christmas and if you can see that on the bottom I mean it has La Inga, Lu, uh, C.S. Lewis, Annie Dill Dilliard, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, um, on and on and on and this was just amazing lovely encouragement for my Christian faith and I just walked away with so many beautiful things to contemplate and I wrote out some quotes and I just highly recommend that one. And I had a year of two amazing Advent devotionals. I also read this one by, he is, I believe he's in the Anglican Church and he's also a poet and a professor. Um, and it was just beautiful. He gives, he opens out with a poem and then he talks a little bit about it and applies it to the Advent and Christmas season. He also includes some of his own poetry, which I really enjoy Malcolm Geitz. And poetry. It's modern poetry, but it's very accessible, very gentle, and just so simple, but then hard hitting and um, deep underneath. So I highly recommend those two. I have a lot of quotes I want to write out from this, and the kids and I are actually using um, a Tennyson poem that he used in one of his uh, devotional entries. He has a fragment of a Tennyson poem, poem and it's Ring Out the Wild Bells. And the part that he included in here um, is just, there's it's like one and a half pages, but it's just beautiful. And the kids and I are just reading it together each day for however long we feel like it. And I feel like we'll walk away with a little bit of it in our hearts, stamped in our hearts. And so um, I wanted to read it to you because I've been noticing all the Poetry Thursdays around and they are just lovely and I enjoy them, but I haven't had a chance to just sit down and do one. So I'm gonna read this fragment from Malcolm Geitz, Waiting on the Word. 
So this is in memorandum um, CVI, which is Roman numerals, but I don't know what that is off the top of my head. Alfred Lloyd, Lord Tennyson. Ring out wild bells to the wild sky, the flying cloud, the frosty light. The year is dying in the night. Ring out wild bells and let him die. Ring out the old, ring in the new, ring happy bells across the snow. The year is going, let him go. Ring out the false, ring in the true. Ring out the grief that saps the mind for those that here we see no more. Ring out the feud of rich and poor, ring in the redress to all mankind. Ring out a slowly dying cause and ancient forms of party strife. Ring in the nobler modes of life with sweeter manners, purer laws. Ring out the want, the care, the sin, the faithless coldness of the times. Ring out, ring out my mournful rhymes, but ring the fuller minstrel in. Ring out false pride in place and blood, the civic slander and the spite. Ring in the love of truth and right, ring in the common love of good. Ring out the old shapes of foul disease, ring out the narrowing lust of gold. Ring out the thousand wars of old, ring in the thousand years of peace. Ring in the valiant man and free, the larger heart, the kindlier hand. Ring out the darkness of the land, ring in the Christ that is to be. I just thought that was so beautiful and so inspiring and very relevant for today. So, um, yeah. So, um, I mentioned that I wanted to talk about Oshina's challenge this week. I think it goes through today or tomorrow. Um, but I wanted to chat about that. And I'm also going to show a little bit of progress on my reading journal um, uh, in conjunction with that. So these were my four picks um, for Oshina's challenge, and I'll just show those to you. So I have C.S. Lewis, Out of Silent Planet. I have One Day in the Life of Ivan Denzovich, The Quiet Season, and The Spice Box. And so the, I, have, I have quite a bit of The Spice Box left. So I, I made some headway. This is uh, Grace Livingston Hill. I took off the dust jacket because it was a little fragile. But it is very sweet. It has kind of two story threads going on. I'm not sure how they're going to converge. But the one is a woman ran away from an abusive, abusive brother-in-law after the death of her sister. And a sweet country doctor finds her on the side of the road in a snowstorm near the cemetery where her, her sister is buried. And so um, he's been nursing her back to health. And... Um, it's been interesting because she uh, just found out um, now that she's helping him in the hospital uh, to kind of to pay back her debt. She hasn't been real forthright with who she is just because of her fear with her brother-in-law. And there is a big something that happened that kind of is um, interesting and a little scary. Um, the second story is about a woman who's kind of more towards uh, middle age, towards feeling a little old she and she wants a change and some unknown well some an aunt and uncle who she wasn't very close with leave her she gets all their property when they pass and she finds herself in a place of not having to work anymore and she's just kind of lost and and she reads in an old newspaper that they need help with boys on the street and this leads to some you know revelations about herself and something with the neighbor boy and just kind of blossoming and coming into herself and so almost like a coming of age story but with a middle age older woman and it's it's good it's it's sweet it, it, grace livingston hill is definitely saccharine so and pretty you know um pre somewhat predictable but so far i've really enjoyed it and i'm going to keep going on it so um the big surprise for me has been how much i'm appreciating um, a rereading out of the silent planet by C.S. Lewis this I am getting really close I'm probably three-fourths of the way done and this is uh, my challenge for Oshina's challenge this week for a, a 250 page less book but also for Chantel's um, uh, read your shelf through the year and so this will take care of my January selection but this has been really interesting it's been it has a lot of interesting quotes 
West, uh, it follows a man named Ransom, and this is a little spoilerly, but he gets kind of kidnapped almost and taken to a different planet. And the two gentlemen who take him, he knows one of them uh, a little bit from school, um, Divine, and Weston is the, his uh, partner. And pretty quickly after they land, he gets away from them. And it's really interesting what happens as he meets and just a lot of preconceived notions and different things about aliens or foreigners or people that aren't like us are just really challenged. And he's a professor, Ransom is, and he's a professor of languages, which is very interesting and beneficial to him because as he starts to meet the inhabitants, I think of it's um, Malakandra is the place he's on. And just some um, deeper uh, thought thinkings and ruminations on mankind and how we treat one another and just different things. And it's a lot more readable. I felt like it, for some reason when I read it last, I thought it was a lot harder to understand, but I'm not having that. Now I read this probably maybe 15 years ago, <laughs> 20 years ago. So I was a lot younger, you know, but it's interesting. So, and I'm not sure if I'll continue the series. I'm, I'm waiting till I'm done. I've been tabbing things that are really beautiful or interesting to me, and then I've been picking a few to add. I won't add all of them, but a few to add to my commonplace or my reading journal. And then the other ones I just reread a couple times just to enjoy it, just to make myself slow down. And then I will take the tabs out eventually, but that's been really fun. Um, I can't say this author's name very well. I Googled it, but then I forget by the time I get ready. But this, you guys, I'm um, I'm three fourths way through. This is for my historical fiction pick, um, and it was a gift. So, for Oshina's challenge, this is just amazing. This is sobering and delightful, relevant for today. It follows a man who, it, for one day, living in a Soviet uh, prison camp, and talk about dehumanizing. Dehuman they are not treated well, to say the least. And I think this is what a gulag is. I, I, correct me if I'm wrong below, but um, this is super readable. Many beautiful passages, sobering, interesting quotes. Just thinking of myself, what would I, if I was in a situation, how would I live like this? Um, so I am really enjoying this. I probably won't finish it by the end of Oshina's Challenge, but I'm really close and I'm gonna keep going and I'm really excited to finish this up. I know some friends read this with high schoolers in their um, homeschool community group and they said they had great discussions. So that's really interesting to me. Um, this, I am about halfway through this. It's about Wisconsin. This has been just sweet, um, just beautiful quotes and lovely things about winter in Wisconsin and in like the 40s. Um, and so I have really been enjoying this. This is a memoir. Um, I did take some quotes out of this too. I included, I did a little nature journal entry with my kids and I have it on my blog, which I'll link below. I added one of the quotes from this. And what's funny about this is, oh, some of this is not too different from the way I live currently with my husband and children out in the country in Wisconsin. Now, of course, Thank God we have plumbing and indoor plumbing and electricity and there's there's different things because we're not I wouldn't say we're 100% self-sustain self-sustainable which these people probably were Mr. Apps and his family I mean they you know grew everything and they were milking cows and they canned and they you know it, it's amazing just the the resilience and how wonderful um everybody was. And so I'm going to continue this. I don't have it quite finished, but I'm just enjoying it. And the next chapter is about ice fishing. So that should be fun to see. Um, so I will show you, I have a couple, I added a couple finishes to my book. And of course, these were ones that I had, um, I had started in December, so these weren't January. I, I just put them because I finished, so that's technically not. Um, but I had finished The Wild Robot and Aggie Morton, which I had talked about here on my channel. And I, I gave five stars to the 
uh, Wild Robot, four stars to Iggy Morton. I loved Iggy Morton at the, more toward the end. There was something that wasn't my favorite for middle grade, but it wasn't bad or anything. It wasn't a big deal. It was just my personal preference. And then I haven't added my second. These are my two Advent reads, um, waiting, watch for the light and waiting on the word, which I haven't added. So, um, another thing I have done is I have been doing quote. These are some of my quotes that I did save. I would have a lot more quotes I wanted to save from out of the silent planet. So I just did this little spread and I've been putting quotes in. My white gel pen is running out, so I'm gonna have to figure that out, but that's been fun. I also have an empty page for Ivan Denzovich um, that I want to put some quotes on because that one has some really good stuff in it. Um, I made a couple other um, pages. I was kind of working on this slowly. Um, I made, um, maybe I'll talk about that one later because I want to say something else about that, but, um, what is the other one I mean? Hmm. Oh, I added some quotes to my Flannery O January page because I've, I am slowly reading just some of her short stories. Um, I've read two short stories from her so far and I really thought the first one was interesting it was definitely on the creepy side. Um, the quote I had, it was called Enoch and the Gorilla. And the quote I had was, burying his clothes was not a symbol to him of burying his former self. He only knew he wouldn't need them anymore. And this was really interesting about, kind of about a man who is just not comfortable uh, in his own skin. And so I, I'm still thinking about it. The second one I read was pretty disturbing. Um, it The details of this story, it was called A Good Man is Hard to Find, were incredible. She just made you feel like you were there, you could smell, you could hear, you could just, it was like you could feel the fear of everything. You could, um, I would say it had like an element of horror, it had racism and murder in it. Um, it was interesting. So I didn't have any quotes from that one. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to give her some more tries. I'll keep reading some of the short stories for Flannery O'Jerry. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was um, a couple of current reads and things that I'm excited about. Um, and uh, then I wanted to just end with something that I'm planning on doing, a couple things I want to do coming up. So the other day I forgot, the last time I filmed, I forgot to mention that this was some book mail I got. And I have read Denise Levertov before. She's a poet. And I believe she was English, but she immigrated to the United States. So I'm pretty sure about that. Um, this, I've only read maybe four or five poems and I love them. This morning one was basically speaking to how authors speak to us and how they can mean they don't and you know they don't know when they're writing what they wrote they don't know how they're going to touch someone years later or in what situation or what age or who they are and so this is so interesting because this is um Denise talking about herself when she was a child I believe it could be fictional but I believe it's autobiographical and about herself reading Anton Chekhov around World War II with a friend or a sister or something. I, quite, I didn't quite know who it was, but a handicapped, disabled girl. And how much that poem by, or those poems by Mr. Chekhov, I think that's how you say his name, um, impacted them later in their life. And it was just so beautiful to me. And so, I mean, I teared up. I just felt so, it was just so lovely. And just to remember that you and what you share with people and how you love people has value. And so if you write a card to someone, if you write on your blog, or if you, you know, send a text or you and go out for coffee with someone and you share bits of yourself, 
it has value. And I thought that is just so profound, you know, and beautiful. We all, every person has value. And so, and then the first poem was beautiful too. Um, I, I don't know. It was called Human Being, the first poem. So really beautiful. I'm really excited to slowly, I'm going to read this all year. I'm not going to rush through it. Um, I'm really excited about that. And the second one I'm really excited about is this one. I am barely into this book and already I've had some beautiful passages. Um, this passage is the one that I've been kind of meditating on and I wrote it down and I've just been thinking about it, trying to go slow. Book of John is one of my favorite books of the Bible and this is Tozer's thoughts on it. It says, your poor heart in which God put appreciation for everlastingness will not take electronic gadgets in lieu of eternal life. Something inside of you is too big for that, too terrible, too wonderful. God has set everlastingness in your heart. All the things of this world are here for but a moment and then are gone. None can satisfy the longing for that eternal raging in the soul of every man. And I just love that. So I'm excited about that one. My sister recommended this one to me and I read the opening page and wow, it was good. And it has to do with Prague and libraries and legends and Nazi occupied Czechoslovakia. I don't know, it looks like it's gonna be really good, a little creepy. I did not read The Essex Serpent, so I don't know if anybody's read that, um, but I really trust my sister's recommendation, so I'm really excited about this one. Sounds kind of magic realism, fantasy, creepy, creepy-ish. Um, I'm really trying hard to read my shelf and not put too many books on hold at the library at a time. I still use the library, my public library extensively. I love it. We order in a lot. And this one looked really good. I've heard this recommended on various channels over and over again. And I read the first few pages and it sounds really cute. It is really a chunker. So we'll see with homeschool starting back up. I feel like I already have a lot of books going, but so. So that is kind of what I have. I do have this little stack going. I love the Lost Spells. I had, I had, that had been on my radar. I've read it a couple times. Beautiful poetry. My son, my little son loves looking at the owls. Um, the Castle of Tangled Magic I talked about before. I, I dipped into that. I want to, one of my challenges for this year is to read short stories, more short stories. And I also want to read, that's why I wanted to show you the spread later. I want to do, and this is kind of read my shelf, but I would like to read more Diana Wynne Jones. Um, she has an extensive backlist. And <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> I made this spread and this, um, The Warlock at the Wheel is a collection of her short stories. So I thought I had it on my shelf. Um, I have talked a little bit about Paranasi, which I started. It's really neat. A memoir, Walk in the Woods, which I got at a little free library. And then the Mak Makioka Sisters, that's my Japanese selection for the, one of my Japanese selections for the year. Just started it. I had to make a character sheet because I had to, to be able to figure out the characters. So that might be a little bit deeper read, but I'm really excited how it opened out. So. And then this is my son's The Ball and the Cross by G.K. Chester Chesterson. Wow. And he borrowed that to me and wanted me to try it out. And then back here I have my pile for Chantel's challenge. And then there's a blogger. Um, her name is Karen at Books and Chocolate. For years, probably 10 years maybe or less, I don't know, she's done a Back to Classics challenge. Now, a lot of the things that I'm already reading um, will be classics, so it could I could cross over from all my other challenges, but I might like to try that. And this is some of her her challenges this year. So she has you know like 19th century, 20th century. She has a female author, um, a non-white author, um, crime classic, classic short story collection, pre 1800 classic. That'd be kind of hard. A nonfiction classic, a classic that's been on your TBR the longest. 
Um, so, yeah, I might try some of this and some of my ones I'm already reading for my various challenges will cross over. So this is getting kind of long, but before I end, I want to talk about, um, I've just been so inspired by like Tiffany, uh, Tiffany at Beautiful Minutia and then Emma at A Bookish Princess has so many beautiful things. I've kind of been stalking some back videos of hers. Um, and Kate Howe had a reread and some classic things she was talking about. So the, all of these booktubers had so many cool things. And one thing I want to do is, I besides Diana Wynne Jones, I also want to do a, um, I want to do a, I haven't finished this page yet, but I want to reread one of my favorite childhood. I guess I came to her as an adult though, so I shouldn't say childhood. But Susan Cooper, um, I think is so underrated, this fantasy series, the Dark is Rising series. Now this I would say is on the darker end of middle grade, um, and it is based on Welsh and English, British-ish folklore. Um, the covers I have are pretty ugly, personally, I think. I wish I had beautiful covers, but I don't. But this one is actually my favorite, the first, the Oversea and Understone. There is five of them, and so I would like to reread those. And then Susan has a large backlist, too. Oops, I'm knocking books over. And I would like to do that. So I made a little spread, and this is a joke here. Susan Cooper. Cooper Army. So it's a little joke about my K-pop. Um, I'm a K-pop fan, especially BTS. And so I have my a few of my BTS stickers. And I, But I want to be a Susan Coop Cooper fan because the BTS fans are called the Army. So, sorry. Very inside joke. But I'm going to list Susan Cooper's stuff that I want to read. And I know I have quite a few, or at least a few, on my shelf that I would like to read. So, um, there was one other thing. I th actually, that might be it. So, I, this is really long. And so, I just want to say, hey, I've been missing you. And that's why I'm blathering so long. And with school started, I'm hoping I can just, like, update every Friday or something. Or once a week. And you can check out my blog for little other little things and I will try to link all those people and different things I mentioned if I can remember all of them but it's been so fun thank you for all your wonderful videos and another one that I've been watching too is Mitzi at Mitzi Reads and Writes hers are really fun um, it's just so fun such a nice community so all right so have a nice afternoon and hope you get in some good reading bye